Hello everyone, in this video we are going to be discussing about the difference between the gout and pseudogout as well as we will also look at the different types of gout that is the primary gout and secondary gout. So first of all let us discuss about the difference between the gout and pseudogout. So the crystals which are accumulated in case of the gout are the monosodium urate crystals or which you can also write it as MSU in short. Then in the pseudogout the crystals that are deposited in the synovial fluid are the calcium pyrophosphate dihydrate crystals. Now the crystals in the gout, they can be easily digested by the uricase enzyme. While in case of the pseudogout, the calcium pyrophosphate dihydrate crystals cannot be digested by the uricase enzyme. Then let's look at the age. Um, in which the gout and the pseudogout occurs. In case of gout, the crystals appear in the people after age 30, while in case of the pseudogout, it occurs after 50. If it occurs in the young patients, it would be observed in the hereditary form and could be the form associated with other disorders. Then the gout affects the male more than the females and the females rarely develop gout after menopause while the pseudogout equally affects the males and the females. Now let's talk about the appearance of the crystals in the polarized light. So in case of the gout, these crystals appear to be long, cylinder and needle shaped and are negatively bipharyngent. While in case of the pseudogout, these crystals appear to be rhomboid shaped and they are weakly positive bipharyngent. Now let's talk about the inflammation. So inflammation in case of the gout is intense and that is why the joint pain and the swelling that is associated with it is severe. While in case of the pseudogout it's mild and joint pain and swelling are moderate. Then in acute presentation the patient would present with the acute monoarthropathy and in the case of gout, it usually affects the small joints and most commonly the metatarsophalangeal joint of big toe. While in case of the serogout, it affects the large joints and especially the knee. Now in the radiographic findings, what we can see is that in the gout, um, it is presented with the well-defined punched out periarticular erosions and there is no calcification that can be seen. Soft tissue swelling is also there but it's not seen until 6 to 12 years after the initial attack. Now in case of the pseudogout, the chondrocalcinosis can be seen and it means that there is a calcification of the articular cartilage of the menisci. Now let's look at the risk factors and the treatment options. So the risk factors in case of gout can be a male gender or obesity. It can also be associated with the impaired renal function. Definitely if there is no excretion of the uric acid, so this can contribute to gout. Then the metabolic syndrome can contribute as well as the diet. So the red meat, alcohol or the seafood can cause the gout. Then the diuretics and uh, for example, the thiazides can also cause the gout. Then it can also be due to the tumor lysis syndrome as you know that in this case the chemotherapeutic products can cause the lysis of the cells and the nucleic acid of these lysis cells are broken down to form the uric acid. Now the risk factors of the pseudogout includes the elderly people and the hypophosphatemia or the hyperpyothyroidism can also cause the pseudogout then hemochromatosis osteoarthritis or the hypermagnesemia these are all the risk factors then in the treatment options so the first line treatment and the second line treatment we are going to discuss both of these so in the first line treatment we have the NSAIDs for both of these conditions and in the second line we have the colchicine for both of them and in the prophylaxis we can recommend the aloperinol in the case of gout now let's look at the types of gout. So as you know, we have the two types of gout, the primary gout and secondary gout. Now in case of the primary gout, uh, this is basically because of the increase in the uric acid production. And this production is mainly due to the enzyme defect. And this can also be because of the decreased uric acid excretion. And this is mostly because of unknown reasons. 
Now, second regard is due to some underlying conditions. Um, if it is due to increased uric acid production, so that would be in case of the tumor lysis syndrome, as I've already explained, then decreased uric acid excretion can also contribute to it. For example, in case of chronic renal disease, so it means that any kidney disease can also contribute to it. So that was all. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you liked it, so please hit the like button and also share it with your friends. And as always, until next time.